Fast fights, long and bloody fights, which are sometimes to the death. In his report, Pete Cronshaw joins authorities in a raid on a major player. We'll also show you pictures of people filmed during fights, which we hope you can help us identify. A warning, though, some of the images are disturbing. <laughs> about to witness one of the most abhorrent acts of premeditated animal cruelty. If you find these images disturbing, spare a thought for the dogs. They are just seconds into a fight that could last 30 minutes, an hour, maybe more. It's an abomination. People who participate in this sort of activity have got to be sick. Very sick. Jim Boyd has spent 10 years hunting down New Zealand's dog fighters. These dogs tear each other apart. They will fight to the death given that opportunity. And for what? Entertainment? Oh, beautiful. It is a ruthless and brutal blood sport ruled by gangs and criminals. Whole fight report. This underground magazine warns subscribers the SPCA is on the prowl and jokingly urges fight fans to deal with the do-gooders forcibly. He does say we could take them out and beat the crap out of them. Jim Boyd, a former cop turned SPCA inspector, has endured abuse and death threats, but his pitbull-like determination has helped identify many of the big players, guys like Triple D. And here we've got... Triple D is ref, fight ref. Triple D, fight ref. Triple D's Bella, Triple D, fight ref. Triple D's real name is Floyd Lankildy. So he's a big player. Probably the biggest in New Zealand. He was proud of it and quite egotistical. It obviously went to his head and he liked the publicity and liked to, it to be known. And that was one of his downfalls. Triple D, the egotistical kingpin of dogfighting, was about to be reined in. I'd like to get this guy. There could be weapons, there could be firearms. He's quite abusive and I, I would say he can get quite violent if it comes to the crunch. This briefing marked the end of three years of planning. Thank you in anticipation. Let's go get him. Armed with a warrant, the police, SBCA investigators and animal control officers were about to ruin Floyd Lankildy's day and raid his property in the Kaiangaroa village near Rotorua. Oh, 2020 was invited to come along for the ride. Jim Boy! Hi Floyd, got a search warrant to search your oh. premises. Hey, excuse me, what are you doing? They're all my assistants. Take the camera away, please. They're all my assistants. Take the camera away, please. He's purely recording the thing. Take the camera away, please. He's not allowed to do that, mate. Don't I know my rights. Nothing all right here, mate. Inside, police began turning the beneficiary's home over. Oh. There's actually a wallet here. It's got thousands of dollars. You guys want to do a count of it? Yeah. Outside, Tethered by heavy chains to ramshackle huts, sat eight sad-faced pit bulls. You're beautiful, aren't you? The hunt was now on for paraphernalia associated with dog fighting. The thing's springy. Oh yeah, you bought enough people here, mate. That's a break breaking stick for forcing do dogs' jaws open um, when they're fighting or otherwise. You can see the teeth marks. No, it's not when they're fighting, it's used when the dogs happen to make contact with the most humane way of breaking them apart. Scales for weighing dogs. Um... Come on, kid, this is the happiest about to say anything he likes. Picture, crock of shit, set up picture, Jim. To the untrained eye, much of the evidence might seem innocuous. This is how we begin a new dog. <laughs> but not to Jim Boyd. She's learning that as she fights, she's getting rewarded. I had plenty of evidence there. This is a gold mine. For me, though, seizing his computer was the icing on the cake, as it were, the cherry on top. Uh, because if there was any doubt, if the court could ever have any doubt of his personal involvement, that doubt was wiped out with the information that came off his computer. 
Old emails on Lankildi's computer reveal he was ruthless when it came time to weaning out Kurds. That's a dogfighting term for the week. I've shot over 60 dogs probably in the last five years, maybe more. That's how it goes. They live well while they're here, but when it's time, they gotta go. He was also merciless in the fight pit. He was in it till 20 minutes, then the other dog hit a big bleeder on his inside stifle, and mine went downhill. A bleeder in the stifle. That's Lankildi's way of saying a ruptured artery in the leg. Asked for a scratch to continue and was granted it. A scratch is a restart. He didn't move, so I did the right thing and put him down. It went 57 minutes. Just got beat by a better dog. So this dog chickened out, said, I've had enough. So they take it out and shoot it. You know, and they call, it, they call animals animals. No. These people are sick. Everyone has to have a, their bee in their bonnet about something, so he's chosen his battle. Good on him. Good luck to him. <laughs> he won't win. Julie Bennett was a photographer for the Auckland Pitbull Club. Fighters like Lloyd Lang Kildy have always been there on the fringe. People fight their dogs uh, for all sorts of reasons. Where do they fight? Um, they can arrange to do it just about anywhere. You can do it in a garage, in a house, in a backyard. And do they always go to the death? Not all dog fights involve fighting to the death. It's just a time thing. Or one overpowering the other and that's it. You stop the fight. It's not always to do to the death. This video gives a rare insight into the brutal blood sport. It was shot by an undercover cop. The accents are unmistakably Kiwi. There are thought to be more than a thousand followers of this brutal blood sport in New Zealand. This is serious business. We've had incidents where they've hired a country hall, for goodness sake, for for a wedding or for some some reception of some description. And they've set up the pit, the fighting pit, the arena, in the middle of that hall. They've had a paddling pool out the back for children. So they are organised? Very organised and very clandestine. Trust is a rare commodity amongst dogfighters. Every effort is made to keep the audience, the handlers and the refs out of frame. But cameramen can make mistakes. Like we say, this is a rare insight into a blood sport where fighters and spectators are sometimes transported to secret locations in the back of trucks. Shit. Who gave you that? <laughs> oh, my God. Hmm. Yeah. So how many people are in your video that you saw? Three or four. Is that, is that the ref and the owners? Yeah. Maybe one or two watching. Yeah. The mate holding the dog's chain. Yep. Keeping an eye out and um, clocking it, timing it. You almost seem surprised. Oh, um, I'm surprised they let you keep it. As far as Julie Bennett is concerned, Jim Boyd and the authorities are fighting a losing battle. I don't think he's going to outlive the dog fighting. <laughs> That'll keep going till after he's dead. Back at Floyd Lankildi's kennels in Kayangara, it wasn't the condition of these dogs that concerned animal welfare officers. You haven't got that many dogs here at the moment. No. But rather, the number that had seemingly disappeared. Moko? Moko, she's long gone. Dead? Yes. Doesn't look very old, the dog. Really? No, she? no. Well, how's the dog doing? Moxie? Yep, she's long gone. She... Blaze? No, she's long gone. Dead? Yes. Or gone from you? No, long gone. Dead. Is a lot dead? Yes. When, they, when they're so young? Yes, the same. Dead? Yes. Uh, through my doing. What happened there? I didn't like your attitude and your temperament. Is that all? Yep, thanks. Good, good. Good. Lloyd Lankildi, the former cover boy of the Auckland Pitbull Club, a champion in the show ring, a champion in the fighting pit, was about to be closed down. Now, we are going to seize all your dogs. Oh, what? Everyone. On what grounds? On what grounds? I believe 
that the evidence that I have seen today what shows evidence? that you have um, what evidence? You are breeding, training, keeping dogs for the purposes of them in Robin. being involved in animal fighting venture. That is bull, and that's a crock, and you know it. Did I put that in there? These Did two I men, brought together by dog fighting, were about to have a verbal okay. stoush of their own. Well, this is a crock, mate. Kirk can't fluke. Oh, what do you expect? See you on the street one day without your uniform on, Mr. What's your name? Mongrel. I know it's upsetting for you, Floyd. Oh, Sorry oh, about that. Gee, you there's no easy, there's what no do you nice think? Or, there's no easy way of doing it. Oh, you, so, um, you can bet your something, 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 there's no easy way. After 10 months of legal wrangling, the former go-to guy for fighting dogs finally lost his bark and bite. Floyd Lankildy pleaded guilty to breeding and training pit bulls for fighting. He was sentenced to 300 hours community service and banned from ever owning dogs. Look at the claws. Look at the length of those. As for the fate of Lankildy's pit bulls, all eight dogs seized on the day of the raid had to be destroyed. I don't think there's any chance of him re being rehabilitated. I, I think it's so much in his blood that he'll turn up again. He will be there. He will be at the fights. And the fights will still go on. And remember that fight we showed you at the start of our story? After 10 minutes of fighting, the pit is badly bloodstained. The dogs are exhausted and one of the owners appears to concede. But the mauling is allowed to continue.